Today we're here to honor women in business real estate. We're joined here by Desiree Panham, National Association of Women in Real Estate. Desiree, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So let's bring it down. I see that basically to get into um, having some uh, federal access or state access, we really should come back to the five steps. And now that you have established your five steps, now it's the time that you should go to have some access to capital. And how will you do that? What What were the three steps that you would say, now it's time to apply that loan and benefit from it? Great one. Um, well, the, the Small Business Administration is a, it was set up to help um, get small businesses to have access to capital, and the second thing is to maintain their business, okay? And the idea is, is that Small Business Administration has what are called microloans, and those are microloans that are up to $50,000. So, yeah, so let's say that you don't officially own your own business, but you're in business and you have a team. Like, it's very common now to have brokerage teams to where you actually have three or four um, people working in a team and they um, are, are, are growing to start their own brokerage, let's say, okay? And so you can actually go get up to a $50,000 loan, which are called microloans. Then the SBA kicks in and they can go $50,000 to $5 million. That's a lot of money. Wow, yeah. And so the idea is, is that the beauty of the SBA is, is that they actually will help you um, put together your documents, prepare your business plan, and, and walk through the steps to go to the bank to get the loan. The SBA does not give the loan. The SBA insures the loan. So the idea okay. is, is that you go to the bank, you can go to any of the, the, the big banks or even small banks, that, and you've got to make sure that, that they do business banking. So they will actually do the SBA loans. There's over 400 lenders in the United States that actually supply um, SBA loans. And the idea is that even if you get um, denied the first time, but the beauty of it is that you go back to the SBA and say, this is why I got denied. They'll help you restructure and how to get it put back together to go back to that bank to get the loan approved. So you would say it is really important to go to the SBA before you go to get a loan because if you go through the process or there are steps of the SBA, the chances of you being approved or not approved, it's going to be much likely that you will if you went through the process because you are providing really what is required for that for that type of loan. Absolutely. And the other thing is is that remember small business loans are there's so many different types of small business loans. We're talking about real estate today. Well, right. if I if I were to get a loan in let's say um, hair salon, completely different. Completely different. Yes. So they're going to be able to direct you to the different kind of lenders that are more um, attuned to that uh, appetite of Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's very, very important because time is money. Absolutely. And, 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 and emotions that are involved, um, you know, go to it. And, you know, and the idea is, is that um, that's very, very important. Um, so when you go into the access to capital, get your loan. Once you get your loan, the second thing is, is that now that I've got my loan, okay, so where am I going to invest that money? I mean, obviously you have a business plan, but if you spend all the money into, let's say, marketing, you spend all your money into I'm hiring staff and all of a sudden your money's gone and you have no return. How do you budget that? How do you invest in it? How do you uh, um, structure it to, to make sure you have your, your game plan? And that's what's so important right now because there's so many different software programs, so many different people trying to get money from you, so many different organizations you can join, so many different, um, you know, uh, for example, you buy a car, you put someone in the car to go buy a home, and you drive around everywhere and you burn through at the price of gas, $4 a gallon. I know, it's going crazy. And you're running around, and all of a sudden you find out you spent $500 in gas. And you found nothing. And you found nothing. Or your time, and, and, and then you spent money doing this and doing this and this. You know, that's very important, your time. I think that especially uh, women, um, we forget to value our time. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is very important. We're so... I think we're so used to just be versatile and multitask that we forget to allocate the price of all that. Yep. So Absolutely. we we have to think that if it was not me doing it, I'm paying somebody for it, I will have to be paying, right? Right. Therefore, we have to give a value to that. Desiree, um, can you talk a little bit as to, women probably are wondering, okay, why a small business loan? I get the part that, that helped me to structure and help me to get it. But is there a real advantage between besides the structuring, 
getting a, the obtaining the loan for the small business administration that versus going directly to a bank through a just a conventional loan. Absolutely. Um, the the advantages to me is is that you have the SBA offers a lot of different programs like the 8A program that they actually can go through and do federal contracting to go through the different things. Um, as far as the SBA being involved, um, you know, the only bad thing I'll say real quick, I just want to throw this out there, is is that you you are in debt to the SBA. You cannot get rid of it. That's it's in not Texas. a forgivable loan. It's not a forgivable loan. Okay, um, that's that a, is important to that, That's a bad thing. The good thing is that they have incredible interest rates. They have incredible products. Um, and the also is, is that... So they would offer dif different rates than mm -hmm. a conventional loan would. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, is that they're very... Um, um, they're guaranteeing them. And so the idea is, is that they have a lot more, um, uh, the fact is, is that, I'm not going to say leniency, but they look at it through a different lens. They're vested a little mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. And the idea is, is that by having the SBA involved, they have a vested interest to make sure that your business succeeds versus the not succeed. Because the idea is, I think, I, the quote, um, I believe that their follow rate with the SBA loans is very, very minimal. Um, I, I remember reading it somewhere, and it was very small, so I don't want to come out and say something, but it was their, their follow-up rate for um, not succeeding in the business because you've done the business plan, because you've walked through the steps, is, is incredible. Um, you know, in, if I were to use a statistic just in the normal realtor, um, for in the state of California, nine out of every ten realtors are no longer a realtor in business at the end of the year, in one year. Wow. So 10% of, of the realtors make it past phase one. And we're not even saying that they're in a business in the sense that they, um, other than their broker's dues that they have to pay and their E&O insurance depending on what they're, they're hung with, um, they don't have all the overhead. That's true. So it just you would say that's probably because of poor lack of planning. Not only for like applying, but the, 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 the understanding the industry of how of what's required. It's not a social event anymore. Well, and as you and I know, this industry has changed so much just on, on the last 10 years and just here recently in the last two years that if you're going into real estate with a mine of five years ago, it's completely changed. Yes. Um, and the idea is that I think one of the most important things is, is that continuing education and, and really knowing the basics. In, in real estate right now, it's not required to have a four-year degree, um, and it's not required to have massive schooling. You basically take a couple classes, you take a test, and that's it. And I'm a firm, firm believer of that, um, especially through my personal experiences, that um, it, agents who are, are, are or, or any aspect within real estate, the more educated they are, the better, you know, they have a four-year degree, um, they have continued education, they understand their craft. You're dealing with some of the most expensive things that um, most uh, the biggest people financial are own. people are own a home yeah. um, as, as a core. But if you're buying a business and you don't know what the you don't know what the, the ROI is on that business that, and you're doing it, and so someone goes and says, "Let me buy this apartment complex," and they're looking for you to be their second pair of eyes. Let's say um, you really need to have those those An components understanding. understanding. So we're really big on you know getting a you know getting a degree in, in business or finance or construction or something that you have a four year education you can apply that and you can take some division of that expertise and put it out there because a lot of people don't realize like a home inspector for many many years um, didn't require any kind of lessons appraisal is a better one um, not until the last decade you anyone could be an appraiser so you would be relying on getting a loan from a bank and that bank giving you money um, on the value of someone who had no licensing. But had a value in your, mm -hmm. put a value in your house. Yes. So um, the idea is, is that you now have to go obviously rigorous training to be an appraiser and there's debates on whether that appraisal is correct or not. No two appraisals are the same. I mean that's just one aspect of it. And now you understand that if I'm representing um, or the industry is helping itself it has to help itself on the education and the the quality of in the industry. And so being a woman-owned business I think is very important because we have so many, we're really good at multitasking um, and we're really good at, at looking at things from a different lens. And because of that, um, I think we see things a little bit, uh, uh, we're a little bit more proactive than reactive. Um, and that's why I think it's, it's uh, we're so thrilled here at NARB that women um, are being brought to the forefront and that's what we do. Well, thank you. I think this has been very, very informative. 
appreciate your time and we look forward to having you in the, our next segment of women in business in real estate thanks for joining us and we'll see you stay tuned for the next program thank you very much i appreciate being here thank you